Welcome to the real deal. Hey guys, welcome to a beginner's guide on classic arena and 3v3 with me, the real deal. Um, yeah, so this is going to be offensive teams only. And the reason for that is, is that defensive teams are a lot harder to build. They're more complex. Basically, I want you to understand these teams first. So you know what you're doing and you can start wrecking peeps in the arena. And the second thing is when you're sort of early in mid game, your roster is not going to be so big. So your offensive teams will double up as your defensive teams anyway. Um, I'm going to break the video down into um, team comps. Um, show you to sort of explain why each team comp works, how it works, and just uh, and then give you alternative champions for each one. Uh, we'll have a look at Deadwood Jedi's website for um, the arena speed calculator. So let's just get straight in there. So first team comp we have is a double turn meter comp, which is Hikatoon, Seeker, War Maiden, and Kale. Um, so how you'd get these champions to go in the right order and this is really important so every team comp you build you need to make sure your champions go in the right order and the way you do that is it goes it's purely down to speed so whoever's the fastest will go first second second third and so on and so forth so Hikatoon we put her in we, she's got 300 speed so she will go first then we've got Seeker at say 260 so he'll go second and then we've got War Maiden at say 230, so she'll go third. And then we've got Kale at 200, so he'll go last. So, um, so this is a double turn meter comp. So Hikatoon will um, boost our speed first, and then we've got Seeker in there to boost our boost our turn meter also. And there are other champions. Don't worry, I will go through a big fat list of nukers, turn meter champions, speed leads, stun champions, provokers, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so Seeker will boost our turn meter as well, and he also will provoke an enemy champion. So usually we target a reviver or their turn meter boost champion. Um, but yeah, you sort of as you sort of play with the team more often, you'll get the idea and you'll figure out what you're doing. Uh, War Maiden, farmable champion, very accessible. Um, so basically, you just want her in speed and accuracy, so she lands her debuffs. Um, crit crit rate and crit damage is nice on her as well and attack but she, that's quite a lot of stats to put in her so I'd say for early game you really just want to focus on your speed and accuracy um, Kale don't bother with accuracy at all if you're just building him as a nuker it's nice to have but early game you're not going to be able to get all those stats so you really just want to focus on his speed his crit rate, his crit damage and his attack um, sets so Hikatoon would just be speed gear we don't care about anything but speed, um, seeker, speed and accuracy. So you could go, ideally you want triple perception, but you might not be able to have that luxury. So triple speed is fine. Um, you know, speed and accuracy set as well. And you can mix it up. And same with War Maiden and then Kale. You could go, say, triple offensive set. Um, crawl, Savage and Crawl. Savage and crit damage would be your best sets, but you're probably not going to be able to have those. Savage gear is really hard to get, and it's really, it's hard to get, and it's hard to get all the stats that you need from it. So really early game, I'd suggest using just offense and crawl sets to build his damage up. So next team comp, um, so we've got Hikatoon in there again, um, and there's a bit of a theme here. She's almost in every team. That is how good she is. Um, then we've got um, Archmage Helmet. And he's basically in there to stun. So basically she'll um, boost the speed. He'll stun. Stagnite will uh, drop their defense. And then Magdal will come in and just drop their team with the nukes. So same again. Every single time um, Hikatine is just going to be in as much speed gear as possible. With the best speed that you can give her. Um, Archmage needs some accuracy, so you want to build him with speed and accuracy. Um, obviously, and there's a real theme here. Basically, any champion that's doing any form of CC or drop defense, triple perception all the way. You just want high speed and high accuracy. Of course, if you get some HP and defense and survivability in there, that's great. But early on, you're not going to be able to be so picky and have that luxury. 
So you really just want to focus on speed and accuracy. Uh, Magnar. So he's a HP based champion. Um, ideally, you want to put him in Savage and Immortal, but you may not have that access to that Savage. So Triple Immortal would be fine. He should still hit really hard. Um, of course, he's not going to have that um, ignore defense from Savage, but he's still going to hit hard and he should still be able to drop people. Then next up, we've got our speed lead Hiker Teen again and Termeter Booster. And then you want Physics to be as fast as possible and she will provoke the enemy team so everyone's hitting her while we just plow away at them. And then you've got Ugo to block buffs and drop defense. And then Sinatia, she hits really hard. Um, I think a lot of people forget how good she is because um, there are a lot of good nukers. But yeah, she is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So yeah, she does a lot of damage and all of, no, her A1 is an AoE ability, so she'll always do it, so that's great. Um, she can also um, heal as well, and she can also um, put skills on cooldown as well. And same with her, she's a new um, attack nuker, same as Kale, Brawl, Savage, offensive gear, that's what you want. But just another thing to point out as well, so you want attack banners for nukers. So if it's an attack based nuker, you want attack banner. Um, early on speed boots, attack chest, crit damage gauntlets. However, if you're struggling to get that crit rate, then oh, that's how I think crit rate damage uh, gear is actually really good when you're early on in the game, when you're struggling to hit that 100% crit, uh, crit cap. So that's fine to do as well. That's fine to use that gear as well. Um, but you could use crit rate gloves as well if you really need to hit um, that 100%. Then last team. We've got double nukes and we've got Skull Crown in the lead because she has a faster speed lead aura than Hiker Toon. Um, but Hiker Toon would probably go first, then Deacon would go second, but it's, it's completely up to you to be honest. Um, and what's great about Deacon is he will boost your team's turn meter second, but push their turn meter back as well. And then he will throw out decreased defense as well. And then we've got um, Dark El Hain to just throw out some damage and then skull crown can finish him off actually so you'd want skull crown to be faster than el hain the reason for that is skull crown um, has a double hitter on her a2 so she double hits if their hp is above 50 percent and then dark el hain will um, come in and just finish them off so lots of accessible champions here uh, dark el hain uh, dark el hain is a login reward um, Hiker Toon is a login reward. Physics is a lot of login reward. Um, Archmage you can get from Doom Tower after you've played for a while. So you will get all of these champions eventually. Um, and I just want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of all of them. Um, so Kale. So with all the nukers, you need to be affinity aware. So obviously Kale will struggle against any um, force based. Um, nukers so you need to be aware of that so when you're going against those sort of teams you need to really think about you know ideally I'd rather pair Kale up with another magic uh, decrease defense champion it makes sense to be honest really you should try and pair them up like I've done with Stagnite and Magna the reason for that is is that if um, Magna you know if he's coming up against a um, magic affinity champion he is going to struggle, so it makes sense to be able to take out, you know, force affinity teams. And just to point out as well that these teams are purely based on speed and winning the speed race. Um, so if you don't win that, you are going to lose and you've got no real form of backup, like having a revive. And apart from Ugo, but she needs to be last man or last woman standing um, for you to get that revive. So that is one sort of weakness that all these teams have. The other thing as well is that sort of not epics are a lot better than rares, obviously, and epics are still really good. But in general, legendary champions, not always, but in general, legendary champions will offer more utility, like block revive, they'll go for unkillable, and you know, um stealing buffs and stuff, that's all really useful because it means that if Swift Parry procs. You can just steal it and kill them anyway. Um, 
the other things that you need to be aware of, of are sort of picking your opponents and matchups. So for example, um, say you saw a really fast team and their second champion is a block damage or they have unkillable buff. You're not going to be able to kill them in two turns or one turn, whatever you've got. And you're going to lose all your abilities are going to go on cooldown and they'll just kill you. That's just another thing to be aware of. But in general, you should be strong enough to take on any team. So let's have a look at speed or elite champions. So first up, we're going to go to one of the best websites on the Internet, and that is alumilove.net. So if you just type into Google raid tier list, it's usually the first or second link that comes up. And we're looking at speed or elite champions. So you, there's only two types of speed auras that you can use, which is all battles and uh, arena. So ideally for these team comps, I mean, like obviously Duchess is amazing. Fushan's great as well. Um, so for example, if you did pull them, you could use them. Um, Fushan, obviously he'd be your speed lead, but he'd be doing damage. Duchess, I guess you could have her as your ghost second champion because she does put out block debuffs. Uh, Lissandra is obviously great as well. Um, she's also a term meter booster as well. Uh, Yoshi the Drunkard is also a really good option. Um, so he boosts her meter, he increases accuracy, and he throws out fears. Uh, Deacon Armstrong, Hikatoon are the only real epics that I'd really recommend. And you could potentially use Battle Sage as well. There's not a huge lot of options there, unfortunately. I wouldn't bother with any of the rares. Okay, of course, Arbiter's a great one. Uh, Lord Shazar, Prince Kaimar as well. Um, Archmage, Gembo. So Gembo, use him all the time, really good option. Uh, Gorgorab, really good in the lower tiers. So he um, has turn meter buff, uh, sorry, turn meter boost, but also revives as well. So if Things go if things aren't going your way, it's okay. He'll pick you back up. And uh, Jingle Hunter is better in the lower tiers. Has a bit of CC. Personally, I've never used them. Um, I pulled them when I was like sort of after two years in, so like did nothing to my account. Uh, and Skull Crown, as you saw earlier, great, great champion, great speed aura, and is um, a nuker. So you can, like I said, you can have two uh, turn meter boosters instead. So for uh, decrease defense champions we only want to be using champions that have an AoE ability and we want the strong version of decrease defense which is 60% so a best great champion um, Alexander the sharpshooter I don't want to include him on the list um, just because you could only get him for a certain time period um, Draco Morph is Draco Morph Draco Morph is great Ghostborn is awesome Herndig is amazing. Uh, Lydia, of course, you probably are very unlikely to have her. Uh, Ray is a great option. Uh, Royal Huntsman should be okay. CC of Flame Tongue, great as well. Um, Two Lord and Usaga are also great, and Venus. Uh, Amin is okay. Deacon's great. Uh, Duck the Pierce is amazing. No, not amazing. Good. Mid mid to early, so over getting carried away there. Madame is obviously one of the best champions in the game. Siege Hulk should be pretty good. Spider is actually really underrated. I used to use spe uh, speeder, Spider all the time. And he does AoE, decrease defense, and weaken, so he's great. Uh, Stagnite's really good. Tyrell's great. Ugo's amazing. Bala is Okay, I think from memory, I actually used to play with her quite a bit back in the day, and I think she does um, strip buffs as well. But I'm, I can't, I'm not 100% sure about that. And Zagala is an, actually another great option as well. So with Provoke Champs, of course, we only want to be using AoE um, Provoke, so we make sure that we grab the whole team's attention. Um, great options are Ignatius, Iron Brago, Coronar, Krisk. Marta, Molly, Sigmund, um, Tormund's good as well. Vizix is great. Solus as well, but he's more will be using you'd be using more of a new cut anyway. And the other thing you want to check as well, 
is when you're um, looking at provoke AoE champions, you want to make sure that their AoE provoke is 100%. Um, otherwise, you know, there's a chance that you may miss and, you know, they're going to turn around and smack you. So, Rockbreaker, um, Taraki the Frog, Umbral, Bogoth, they're all great options. Even Narhal can be used for um, provoking the enemy. Uh, Stun Champions, Astralon, great. So, rather than build him as a Nuka, you could potentially build him as your Stun Champion instead. Um, Biggin, great option. Fushan, great option. I didn't know Nethral had a AoE ability, so yep, use him as a AoE stun. Rorik, Seal of the Drake, so free champion that everyone gets, great option. Uh, Archmage, Gurangi, Gurangi, yeah, Gurangiri, um, Husk, Magna, Miscreated Monster. So I think I don't think Husk's um, stuns one hundred percent. So Probably best to avoid him, but Buran Giri, I'm pretty sure is 100%, and Miscreated Monster. So there's not a huge amount of um, AoE stun champions, but Archmage, Buran Giri, Magna, and Miscreated Monster should all be able to do the job. So, as amazing as Illumi Love is, unfortunately, it doesn't have a page full of nukas. So, I just want to go through all the AoE nukas um, that we can. So, first off, Okay, Septimus, he's not an AoE nuker. However, um, if he gets a kill he will um, on one of his abilities, I believe it's A1, he will just go for the whole team until he's killed the whole team. So technically, he is sort of like an AoE nuker. He will just be able to clear the board for you. So great champion. Uh, Horden actually does the very same thing, but he's a weaker version of Septimus. But early mid-game, he's pretty strong as well. Uh, Gerard, single target champion, but I just want to shout out to him because he actually hits really hard. So you could use him with, like, say, with a provoke team and then take out their reviver and then take out their threat. So, aka their nuka. Um, yeah, otherwise, there's not really anyone else that I would use. Um, Yannicka, great. Ethos, amazing as well. Um, he's one of the hardest hitting champions in the game. Ah, so, Kale. Elhane, Gaelic, all of those star champions are really good and will be able to get the job done for you. Uh, Astralon, another great champion. It's really hard. Um, Abess, great nuka. Even though he gets a lot of hate, Constantine hits really hard as well, so definitely worth investing in. Uh, Phanax, Phoenix, Phanax. Um, he... He's great as well. Definitely will do some damage. Um, Aethel should be good enough as well. Uh, Barbarians. We've got no real legendaries that are used for arena nukes. And None of their epics I'd really use for nuking either. Um, however, they got Soul Bond Boya, who should be good enough to do some damage um, if you're lucky enough to pull her. And she doesn't need a um, hundred percent crit rate. I think she only believes like seventy, so you should be able to drop people with her. Ogun Tribe Biggin's great. I think Sea Chalk can hit pretty hard, so he might be worth investing in, but I'm not 100% sure. Once again, not really any sort of nukers I'd worth uh, worth investing in. And not really with the rares either. Uh, Lizardmen, we've got Draco, Bushan, Razin, usable champion that everyone can get. Insane defense nuker, hits really hard. Um, and also, if you put a bit of accuracy on him, he'll drop turn meter as well. Uh, Balisk, I believe, can hit really hard as well and has like a cheeky revive. No one else I'd bother using. Uh, Skinwalkers. Uh, two Void Legendaries, but Tamisia and Leoris, if you're very, very lucky to have them, 
obviously great options. Yeah, no, mm, yeah, no epics or rares are used as nukas from skinwalkers and orcs. Yeah, wouldn't really use any of those as Norka. Norka, Norkas, Nuka. Um, Zagala is really good. Blood Feather um, is like a bit of a sneaky one you could use as well. It's really hard. And I know we all know about Seer, um, but she does require setup if you want her to work properly. However, she also does bring strip buffs as well. So you could use her to strip buffs and put the team to sleep. And then come in with your Nuka. So you could technically sort of use her as CC champion, but then you know you're not really using her to full potential. Uh, Demon Spawn, we've got Countess Lix, um, who is really, really good. Um, yeah, see, she does a, she actually does really a lot of damage. And if you pair of Astralon, they're a great comp. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have Countess Lix. Um, but she can also build, be built to just lock out the team as well with lots of accuracy. Uh, Candrophon. Amazing champion. Uh, is better for defense, but still great for early game, mid game, and even late game, to be honest. Uh, offense teams as well. Great champion. Yeah, and then obviously we've talked about Magnar earlier. HP Nuka. Uh, Rotos again, great champion, single target, and um, can start popping off. I would definitely worth investing in, but he's not really going to do the job that we want. But if you did pull him, he should carry you pretty far in the game, and you just put some supports around him, he'll he'll do the job. Uh, Mashore actually, um, so with Mashore, just need a bit of accuracy as well, and he will be doing damage, speeding up your team, and fearing them. And to be honest, I've come up against Mashores many a times. And if they get if they start triggering you with true fear, that's it, it's game over, and they're locking you out and they're just doing insane damage. Um any so Dark Aethel, yeah, I guess she could do work, but I'd definitely rather use Dark Elhain. Not really any other nuke is worth mentioning. Nope. Okay, Ray, Foley, Xavier, all great nukers. And for example, I'm definitely leaving off people like Rule, um, anyone that needs sort of self. So like obviously Rule would need someone that's going to power Hex before he does any damage. So a bit pointless. Uh, Dark Kale, great nuker. Be lucky enough to have him. Loria can put in some work. Uh, Lua, I believe, hits pretty hard as well. Yeah, and then just Kale. Knight Revs. Um, so, Gaius. <laughs> amazing champion. If you pull him, he is so worth investing in. He only needs speed, accuracy, and attack, really. And, yeah, he'll put them to sleep, but also put bombs on them. And when they wake up, they'll blow up. So, great, great champion. Really worth investing in. Thea Tomb Lord. Nope, because she's the same. She needs that set up. So, not really a good option. I mean, if you're lucky enough to pull Hegemon, of course you're going to use that Nuki Mon, and he's going to be dropping people for you. Um, almost forgot uh, Solus as well. I mean, they're both Void Legendary, so the chances are that you have them are very, very low, but both great champions. Yep, Sinatia, as we said before, amazing champion. And of course, if you have Sinatia and Skull Crown, pair them together, and you're just getting a really strong. Uh, double team there. Um, dwarves. Obviously, we all know about Trunda being an absolute beast. Um, Herndig's great champion as well, and he offers utility as well. I guess that's what's great about Trunda as well, is that she can actually have some CC if you want that as well. Uh, Galia is great as well. Great option as another nuker. Yeah, so it's a real shame because it's 
pretty much just epics and legendaries for new because you there's not that many rares that are gonna do the job for you um i don't want to mention ninja because he you know if you weren't around when he's about you won't have him so there's no real nuka legendaries um gembo definitely one of the best champions in the game um such a good nuka um orbo i believe is pretty good as well so those two are definitely worth investing in so this is the deadwood jedi's website um it's actually just recently had an update and i had to make an account for it but it's still free to access the uh, arena calculator and um, however if you do have some spare money and you you know there's more you want to access he you know you can go premium and pay for extra features and you know he is a really good content creator and he really does help the community so if you do want to help support him please go ahead and do that first of all you need to choose your aura of your speed lead and then you put in your champions so put them in the correct order that you want to use them in and then we'll show their gear so we've got Hikatoon triple speed set uh, Laura of Steel she's going to be boosting her meter and it's really important that you make sure that you select the right ability to show um, that they are doing that turn meter boost. So, for example, if I change it on, and actually, this is really clever, this is really um, cool. But for example, I've changed it to just as A1, so it's changed the speeds requirement for the rest of the, the other two. So, they barely need any speed now, as where before, um, you know, you need to have three, well, two champions with 250. So we've got our champions set up correctly. Um, we've put in their roles as well. So you can see here, turn meter boost from High Cartoon. Seeker is going to um, increase our turn meter. And as I was saying before, so High Cartoon increases your turn meter by 15%, where Seeker increases it by 30%. Um, and then we can see that she's going to throw out that decreased defense. And then Kale is going to come in with the A2 and just nuke. So we've got, um, and then out, say for example, our high cartoon is at 300 speed. Her true speed is 319 from um, Law of Steel. And then Seeker needs to be a minimum of 251 speed, so you don't get cut in. And then War Maiden and Kale will just be 196 and 195. So as long as you've got those numbers, no one's going to be cutting in. And yeah, you should be able to just nuke away with no problem. Okay, so let's try and do some live matches. So I'm in gold five at the moment. So I think it's going to be really difficult to get some matches, but I'm going to try with this team comp anyway. Um, Kale's got gear. I don't know if War Maiden has gear on her, but hopefully she does. My, my hike team's very fast. So let's go for it. And let's uh, demonstrate this team in action. So boost our turn meter. Then we're going to increase with Seeker. Then we're going to try and CC uh, Prince Kaimar. Oh, so we're actually faster than uh, War Maiden. That's not good. Okay, still, so ideally War Maiden should have gone first, but that's all right. And then just a bit more damage. And then we'll finish them off with Kale. Stick an auto. Yeah, so even with my really trash team, or say very early game team um, as you can see i managed to beat this team which you know prince kaimar and madame um and we still managed to beat them so yeah pretty good game so when doing um you know classic arena and 3v3 um so essentially 3v3 you know like i said you're just going to copy those three offensive teams um, and you probably won't have a big enough roster to sort of change them out. But for example, this team comp here, this is a solid team. I reckon I can beat them using um, my double nuke comp. So I've got my double nuke uh, comp. I've had to sub out um, Hikatoon with Seeker, mainly because he increases our attack damage. So hopefully that should give me enough damage to beat this team comp. Um, and then I've also taken out Dark Hain because she has no speed built into her. So I just need Tenacious to just do that little bit more damage. So 
So yeah, let's go for it. So got C carp boosting our Termia first, and then he is going to hopefully provoke Duchess. Unfortunately, she he didn't. Um, boost our Termia, throw out a uh, decreased defense. Unfortunately, didn't land on Ugo. And then smash! Oh my god! And then Skull Crown just absolutely dropped their team. Didn't even need to use Anisha. So that is just an example. Look, that's an all epic team against a legendary team with Candrophon, Ray, and Duchess. So um, the other thing I've got to point out as well is that gear is really important. Um, these champions aren't in my best gear, but gear does play a huge part in this. So I'm really sorry, guys. I'd love to showcase some more matches. Unfortunately, where I am in Arena, is there's just so many strong um, team comps and I just don't think I can showcase um, you know these sort of bronze and silver teams in gold um, there's just I'm not going to get the win um, but what I will do is I will quickly build a team so you'll pretend um, Arbiter is hyper team and then we are going to have in a provoked champion. So we'll have our CC champion. Um, and then we will have a drop defense champion. So they're pretty much. Uh, so we can use Ugo. My Ugo, I don't think she has a huge amount of uh, accuracy, but it should be enough for this team. And then we just need to bring in a Nuka. So. I'm going to stick with Kale. Let's bring in Kale. And my Kale is in terrible gear, but <laughs> hopefully he should just be strong enough to beat this team. And the other thing is that he will do more damage because of the matchup. So we won the speed race, almost provoked the whole team. Really unlucky not to land it on uh, Ghostborn. And then, yeah, drop their team. So, as I said, it's really, it's a real shame because. If my hyper team was fast enough, I could have showcased her actually, and we could have done like a very accessible team. Um, but that is how the game works, you know. When you get higher up, you need to use better champions. Okay, so we've looked at your roster, done some live matches, we've looked at champions, we've seen all the alternatives that I'd recommend using. Um, the other things are gear. So gear is the you know the only way to get that is through dungeons and clan boss and forging your gear. Um, and then the other thing is masteries. So masteries, it is impossible for me to do masteries for every single champion. I'd recommend using either Hell Hades or a uh, Love uh, .net, um to look at masteries. And what you can do is, you know, you want to look, at, make sure you use the PvP masteries and not PvE ones. And when you sort of get further down the line, you've progressed, you've learned more about the game, you can start to then build your own masteries and you are allowed one free reset. So I'd recommend following someone else's masteries as a beginner. And then when you're, you know, sort of, like I said, once you've got a better knowledge of the game, you can start tweaking the masteries and building them yourself. There is a website called, I think it's called Raid Bros. Um, where you can sort of like use a talent or mastery calculator and you know you don't have to waste gen so you can sort of experiment on that first and see what you like the look of and then you can just copy it really good website to use as well so that is the end of the video i think i've pretty much covered everything that i can for offensive teams and hopefully this will help you progress in classic and 3v3 arena so much for what uh, sorry thank you so much for watching guys please leave me a cheeky thumbs up make sure you smash 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 that subscribe and i will see you in my next video peace